Hey guys, Tyler again with AR500 Armor, and we are back with another reaction video. We have Matt again with us. Um, as you know, I founded this company seven years ago, and since then I've been designing body armor, plate carrier systems, and armor in general. Matt has been with us for about four years doing the same thing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a random clip showed to us. Uh, this time it's gonna be two clips from Back to the Future. We know it's a retro movie, we know it's a bit sci-fi, we know it's probably unrealistic, but we have fun doing it, so we're gonna do it anyway. Uh, so let's take a look at these clips and uh, we'll give you our opinion on how it relates to reality with current body armor standards. Politically correct Libyan shooting at yeah. Doc. We both want to know what that truck is armored out of. Well, let's just ricochet off don't, the truck. Don't do that. <laughs> don't look down the barrel of your revolver. Don't. He's about to take some rounds. Uh, the flyback isn't... Force has an equal and opposite reaction, so when you take rounds, if you're not flying back shooting the weapon, you're not gonna fly back when you get hit. But he had a mag dump into him, and then an AK jam, which we all know doesn't happen. AKs don't jam, so <clears throat> that's already wrong, but... <laughs> How many rounds? It looked like five or six rounds hit him. At least, yeah. On the first clip. He's gonna need... At least... So it's an AK. AK is relatively easy to stop. It's a 30 caliber bullet, just a little bit lower velocity than a 308. So it's, it's a big bullet and that makes it easy to stop. It's not super high velocity, but it does pack some energy. Um, so if he's running level three steel or something like that, or, or almost any level three plate, and yeah. it's a normal round, not something with like a mild core penetrator. Any level three armor will probably stop. Well, any level three armor should stop an AK from a reputable company. Um, the the concern I would have would be shot placement. Are all of them going to land on the plate? On the plate versus getting, uh, yeah. winging them. And... So it, it, in your in your ten by twelve or eleven by fourteen standard size chest plate to cover your vitals, which are your heart and your lungs, um, he need a level three plate and some kind of hard armor for sure. So, uh, we'll see if he was hiding a plate carrier under the, <laughs> under the lab coat. So my guess is, well, he took a lot of rounds. Does well, a really good job playing well, dead. Obviously he was wearing a testudo under his lab coat, <laughs> level three. I mean, he lived, so clearly it was our armor. He looks fine. He flew back about 10 feet for some reason when he took all the rounds, but. I think those holes are significant. Those are. <laughs> <than the AK laughs> <too>. <laughs> yeah. So they, they glued like flat discs to the plate to make it look like when the AK hit the armor, it fragmented and, and panned out and flattened and just kind of stuck into the vest, which visually is something you see a lot in Hollywood and in movies and in TV shows. Um, absolutely not the case in reality because when a round impacts armor and flattens, it's going to fragment, shatter, bounce back, do other things. It's not just going to stick in there. Um, the exception would be like our build-up coat or something, which is designed to contain frag, but it still wouldn't stick on the surface. It would stick inside of the armor. Yeah, underneath the coating. Yeah. So he was clearly wearing soft armor. Yeah. Definitely so. soft armor from like the 80s. So I don't think that was... Uh... Designed to stop yeah. AK rounds back then? AK rounds were still pretty full power, to my knowledge, in the 80s, so... Not realistic at all, in any way, shape, or form. It's Back to the Future. Um, we just wanted to do it because it was Back to the Future. We had no expectations of it being anywhere near, <laughs> anywhere near reality. Time's up, run! Prepare to meet your makeup next, man. So it looks like we just went back to fists full of dollars and Back to the Future. <laughs> yeah, Cecily, the, uh, the third film from Back to the Future, um, part of it's partially inspired by that movie because when Marty goes back in time, he names himself Clint Eastwood for this. Oh, okay, okay, that's making sense. So we have some synergy here between yeah. the series. flew back from a pistol round right. at about 50 feet. Again, if you can hold it and shoot it and it doesn't knock you back, it's not going to do that to the other side. That's just uh, that's just how it works. Oh, 
a little bit different than a fistful of dollars because he did fall over and play dead versus Clint Eastwood just stood up the entire time. A fistful of dollars was probably the most accurate so far though, honestly. Definitely don't recommend punching steel armor. Not. Okay, yeah, that's uh, well that would, that would be a little bit heavier than it looks. Was that like a front of an oven? Was that, <laughs> yeah. was that what that was? So I mean, if, if it was a front of an oven and it's like cast iron or something, even though it's, like a cast iron pan is extremely brittle, but uh, on YouTube you can see cast, people shooting cast iron pans and they actually will stop like pistol rounds and 22s and then afterwards they'll fragment and shatter. Um, if you take into account time frame and era of when this is, because they went back to like the Western time frame, uh, cast iron may have done a good job of stopping the rounds. They're going to use hard cast lead bullets. I mean, mm -hmm. it's going to be, so they're all going to be soft and lead. Um, and cast iron's very hard, very brittle. Um, it would have shattered, but you're the back to the future expert, <laughs> so you, <laughs> you tell me. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, it was a lot of fun for me watching Back to the Future. Um, we got a few more of these coming up and I'm still working on that John Wick armor, so keep an eye out. We're, <laughs> we're giving him the budget to do it. We're gonna, we want the good guys to win. Good guys to take out bad guys. That's why we're here. That's why we manufacture the products we do. We want every free man to own body armor. We want it to be affordable. We want to challenge the industry and we want to get you guys better armor at more affordable prices. So we truly believe what we're doing is, is changing the armor industry and making it reevaluate its pricing structure and the value you get for what you spend on armor. And um, as we innovate and as we challenge everything, um, you know, the end result is a better product for you guys, whether you choose uh, us or somebody else or whatever armor system you go with. But these videos are a lot of fun. It's a break from uh, a lot of the serious stuff we do, so it's nice to, to do stuff like this. So this is, I believe, our fourth reaction video. We're get, we have some more upcoming, so check out the other ones. We, we started with John Wick, um, and then we did... Punisher. Punisher, and then uh, Fistful of Dollars. Yeah. Um, Fistful of Dollars was, so far, the most realistic out of all of them. Uh, John Wick is what we want to be the most realistic out of them. <laughs> it's the Instagram, you know. We're Yeah, yeah it's, it's Instagram versus reality on that one. Um, so we'll get there. We'll get you guys some John Wick on our budgets uh, up a little bit. Stop. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And uh, keep checking back for more videos.